So my buddy Von Glitchka has this awesome page on Facebook called Drawing Vector Graphics. It's a lot of the courses that he does at lynda.com, and he's got a book series as well. Um, and he posts some really great stuff on there. So if you don't check it out ever, you might want to. Um, the other day he posted something here uh, about a question that he had, or I would say an issue that he had with working with compound paths and Pathfinder inside of Illustrator, where the behavior was just not something that he was expecting, and it was confusing to him. Um, and he posted a video on YouTube to basically demonstrate the problems that he was having, which I looked at. Um, another great person who knows Illustrator very well, Monica Gauss, um, she posted a response on Vimeo, which basically went over the idea about compound paths, the differences between compound paths and compound shapes, pathfinder operations. It's very, very helpful to go through that as well. And I thought that I'd go ahead and go a step further and provide additional clarification around the issues that Vaughn was seeing, and then also mention some of the things that uh, Monica had seen as well. So let me jump into Illustrator, and we can kind of do that. I'm going to create a new document here. Um, just click OK, and I'm just going to create a few basic shapes. So I'm going to create some regular rectangles here. And I'm just going to work with these very, very basic shapes for now. Um, and then we'll just use these as examples. Hopefully this will kind of make life a little bit easier for us. Let me create a few other rectangles here. Let's say this one like that. Let me send that to the back. These are all just filled white, have a black stroke on it. Um, let me delete those and just make an exact duplicate of this. Just to kind of show you some of the things that we're dealing with uh, and to make it easier to work with as well. Now we know that when we want to combine shapes inside of Illustrator, there are multiple ways to do that. And I want to be very clear on this. With Illustrator, keep in mind that Adobe Illustrator is what, uh, last year was its 25th anniversary? It's been around a very, very long time. Computers, the way that people program, the way that people use Illustrator has changed significantly over time. Now every single time that Adobe decides that they want to add a new feature to Illustrator, those new features may be something completely brand new or they may be a better way to work than something that existed in the past, right? So um, let me give you one example. Uh, inside of Illustrator, before we had gradients, there was a feature called blends. If you wanted to have color that gradated from one, shift, one, one hue of color to another, you would create two objects and then you would combine those things together. And then when you did that, you would get this gradation of color. And then some point in time, Adobe added a new feature which was a gradient fill. So now instead of having to create a blend, you can just add a gradient fill. Now is there still use for blends? Yeah, Adobe does not remove features that it had added. Maybe there's some uses where blends are helpful, and blends are helpful in many, many cases. But if you are going to create gradients, well then obviously creating a gradient fill is going to be a better way to do that. And then as Illustrator continues to evolve and new features come out, some features almost like replace other features to make the other features obsolete, right? Um, and there are things like that, again, that happen over time. Let's keep that in mind. In the old days, if you wanted to create a shape and you wanted to punch out a hole from that shape, you had to create something called a compound path. So if I create a rectangle here and another rectangle on top of it, and I want to actually have this part be see-through, where I can see through the background behind this. And to make it easier to do this, I don't need to worry about drawing objects behind it. I'm just going to go to the view menu and make sure show grid. It's a great trick. If you're ever working inside of Illustrator and you want to know if something is filled with white or filled with none, just turn your grid on and then you'll be able to easily see that these right now have a fill of white. But if I take these two shapes right now and I go to the object menu and I choose compound path, I could choose make. The keyboard shortcut for that is command 8. I'm on a Mac. So I'm just going to hit command 8. It, trust me, I've been using Illustrator for so long and in the old days you had to create, create compound paths for almost everything. I have command 8 like literally burned into my brain. Um, command option 8 is to zoom in apparently. Anyway, um, Command-8 is uh, the keyboard shortcut there. Actually, that's weird. I wonder if Mac OS X has something there. Ah, to release, it's Command-Shift-Option-8. Good to know. Okay, in any case, you can now see right through this hole that's right here. Okay, great. So now I have this shape here. That's a compound path, okay? Now, another way to do this, I'm going to hit Undo, is to use Pathfinder. Pathfinder here is an option that was added over time. 
uh, which simplifies the basically uh, working with math inside of Illustrator. So another way to think about this is that if I have two shapes, if I subtract one shape from another, if this shape is on top and this shape is on bottom, I could do this function here called minus front, and that now basically removes that shape. It subtracts it, so now I have the background shape, and I can now see through that little area right now that's in the middle. So I've done a minus front. I've taken that front object, and I've subtracted it from the larger shape that's there. So it's like doing math, but in a visual way. Trust me, if math was like this when I was in school, I would have done great in math. <laughs> in any case, that is the way that it works inside of Illustrator. Just to give you an idea, by the way, there's another function, and Monica touched on this in her video, where if you take two shapes, let's say I take two shapes right here, two squares, and I select them, and I don't just do a minus front, which would give me this shape, right? But I option click on this. I option click on that, or if you're on a Windows machine, you would alt click on it. I get the same result, but if you go into outline mode, you'll see that both rectangles are still there. In fact, if I go ahead now and I select this shape right here, you can see it still exists, and I can move it around, and I could still basically modify what my end result shape is going to look like. That's very powerful. That's something called a compound shape. Right, so let me show you all this right now inside of Illustrator. If I select this, remember we created something called a compound path, right? If I go into my layers panel, I know Vaughn had his uh, appearance panel visible, which I am very, very happy to see. That in my, my opinion, if for those of you who follow my training, the appearance panel is incredibly important. The layers panel is equally as important. Even if you don't use layers, the layers panel shows you the names of all the objects. And while the appearance panel will identify that to you here, it may not be enough information as we'll see in just a minute. Right? So this right now is the compound path that I've selected. If I click on this, this is now a compound shape. If I reveal the contents of a compound shape, content shape, a content shape is basically it's a group. That's what it is. It's just another name. Imagine if the word compound shape was now a group. The only difference between a group and a compound shape is that a compound shape is a group that has some type of shape mode, right, or a pathfinder applied to it. So it's a group with a subtract applied to it. And that's basically what it is. And that gives me the ability to still have both objects in my document. Now, Adobe, when they first introduced the idea of compound shapes, which was back in Adobe Illustrator 10, Right, so not, you know, uh, this is Illustrator 10 before those CS versions and the CC versions even existed. So this is way, way back in like 2000, year 2000, 1999 to 2000. Um, so you had a compound shape that was created inside of Illustrator, and that was the default behavior for Pathfinder. So if I just went ahead and I just clicked on this minus front option, right, then the default behavior inside of Illustrator was that it created a compound shape meaning that both rectangles were still there, and uh, that would now be an editable shape. And again, it acts just like a group. Remember, you have group isolation mode, right? So if I double click on this, everything else becomes isolated, uh, becomes locked in and grayed out, and I can now modify these two shapes easily by clicking on it. So it works and behaves just like a group is. A compound shape is basically a group, like I said, with math applied to it. Um, so in Illustrator 10, Illustrator CS, Illustrator CS2, uh, whenever I took two objects and I applied a Pathfinder, it didn't uh, remove both shapes. It kept both of those shapes still there in the document, uh, and it created this compound shape. If I wanted to get rid of this uh, and basically destroy uh, the ability to now continue to make edits, I would click on the Expand button. And then when I did that, now that other rectangle disappears, and now I can edit the shape as it is. I have my bounding box turned on, and I press Command-Shift-B, turn it off just so you don't see that. So this is what the shape is. I no longer have the ability to move that other rectangle around and modify the final shape in this, okay? I'm using two shapes, very basic, but of course, compound shapes support multiple shapes. And Monica showed some great examples of using symbol instances and text as well, because compound shapes work with all that. But this annoyed the crap out of everybody who used Illustrator, because they didn't know why all those extra shapes were still there. They didn't like compound shapes. They didn't understand what Adobe was trying to do with compound shapes. Uh, the fact that it was non-destructible and you can still edit it. So people were annoyed, because now suddenly, Whenever I wanted to use Pathfinder, I would have to do two clicks. First, I'd have to then do a minus front, and then I would not like the fact that there would be additional paths still there, so I would then click Expand. So now every time I did some kind of Pathfinder, it was two clicks. And 
there was an outcry in the community. People hated it. And for some reason, Adobe could not provide any uh, information in any feasible way to get people to understand the benefits of compound shapes, which I won't get into. It's beyond the scope of this uh, movie itself right here. But just suffice it to say that up until the release of Illustrator CS3, the default behavior was is that just using Pathfinder created a compound shape. Okay, Because of the outcry in the community, um, Adobe listened to the community. People don't necessarily realize this. And Adobe said, fine, if that's really the way that you want it, if you don't really find value in the compound shapes, we'll give you back the ability to just simply apply a regular Pathfinder where it expands it automatically. And that's what we have the behavior from CS3 on and through, to, to, through today. So now when I create two shapes, and I just have those shapes overlapping, and I apply just a minus front, it's automatically expanded. Now, the ability to create a compound shape is still very valuable. So it's still inside of Illustrator. But now, if I want to be able to access that behavior, I would need to option or alt click on this minus front option and that now uses the compound shape command and not the compound path command okay so that's basically the the way that the, just some background information on how that kind of came to be so let's go back though to this example here that i had i had two shapes right i'm going to go ahead now i'm going to just delete these and let's create two more new ones here i have one rectangle and i have another smaller rectangle inside of it I want to punch the middle one out from the shape behind it. I select both. I do minus front. Bam, that's what it is. It's now a compound path, right? Which means it's a single path inside of Illustrator. Pathfinder is a great tool. It basically allows you to perform mathematical functions on all different shapes inside of Illustrator. But Pathfinder doesn't use the exact same math every time. You know, there are plenty of times where you're in a grocery store and you're doing some just quick little math. Oh, you see the price of two items in your head. It's a simple enough calculation where you can just do it in your head very quickly. And then there are some calculations where like you're trying to figure out, you know, what the GDP is for, I don't know, Q1 in the United States of America. Well, that requires a lot of functionality inside of Excel and calculations to do and you're probably going to need a calculator. So there are two very different functions that are there. Pathfinder will Nest will we'll use different, if you want to think about it this way, different methods or different ways to calculate the results based on what it's presented, based on the context of what's there, right? So let me give you the example of what I mean by that. I'm going to show you that the exact same command inside of Pathfinder can create two very different shapes. Uh, and the main impetus behind this is because Adobe will try to preserve as much editability by default as it can under all circumstances to make life easier for you. Right? But again, it still requires you to be aware that these things are happening. Right? So the shape that I just created, let's actually jump into a brand new document for a second, because this way you don't have to worry about seeing all those other shapes. I want you to see my layers panel. So I'm going to select, just draw one rectangle here, and I'm going to draw another rectangle next to it. And then I'm going to draw a rectangle here, and I'm going to have this one overlap. Okay? So let's take the exact, let's just focus on right now this function called Unite. Okay? I'm going to take these two shapes right now which in my layers panel are two rectangle shapes, okay? And I'm going to choose Unite. And Unite is going to now take those two separate rectangles and combine them into a single path, okay? I'm gonna press undo for a second. I'm gonna take this rectangle and let's go ahead and scale it. Or actually, let's just delete it all together. It's gonna be easier just to draw a smaller rectangle inside of it. This rectangle is fully enclosed inside of it. So if I take these two shapes right now, and let's say I do a subtract, right, or minus front. So if I do this right now, Illustrator can't just turn it into a path. This needs to be a path that has a hole cut out of it. And the only way to do that is to create a compound path. So I'm now going to see that if I now choose this option minus front, my end result is going to be a compound path. Okay? So. I guess to make it even a little bit more clear, if I take this and I don't have this shape fully enclosed inside of it, if I do the same command right now, minus front, even though I did the exact same minus front and I use two rectangles, the result of this is just a simple path. The result of this is a compound path, 
right? So it's the same command, but because of the nature of the shapes that I was using, Illustrator here could have said, oh, I can just make a path. Why go through the expense of creating a more complex path, which causes maybe issues later on because compound paths have different settings and, and capabilities than regular paths do. Um, so I, well, I don't need to make a, a compound path. I'll just make a path. You might say Illustrator is lazy. It's just being as efficient as it can. In this case here, because of what my result would be, Illustrator had no choice. It had to create a compound path. Now, if I take two shapes right now, and these two shapes are not touching each other at all, and I were to choose Unite, what would the result be? Would it turn these two into one single compound path? Well, Illustrator says, well, I don't really need to because th no calculations are required. So if I now choose Unite for these two, Illustrator says, well, it's much easier for me. Well, e easier is not the right term. It provides additional editability to the user if I simply group those two shapes together. So now, as I select it and I work with it, uh, it acts and functions as its one shape, but it's really two shapes and my two paths still exist here inside the group. So again, I'm using, I'm just showing you that with Pathfinder, every time I click on Pathfinder, it doesn't use the exact same function when it works. It's something that is completely different based on the context of the shapes that are being used. Now, the reason why Vaughn was seeing issues here is because he provided now multiple functions on top of each other, right? So let me give you an example. Um, let's start with just one rectangle and a rectangle inside of it. And I select these two and I now choose subtract. So now this is cut out of it, right? We go ahead and we choose, let's say red, for example. Okay, I now have a hole cut out of the middle of that. Everything makes sense. I now create another shape out over here. Okay, if I select this, by the way, you see it's just simply one compound path. I now have another shape and I want to combine these together. So I select these two and I use Pathfinder Add. Is Illustrator now going to turn this now into one bigger compound path? No, it's going to say, since these two don't touch each other, I don't need to actually think about any math. I can do this in my head, and I provide additional editability to my user by allowing it to simply be grouped together. But now, what's in that group? In, this is why you need the Layers panel. Inside the group, I have my path, and I have the compound path. The compound path, right? Compound path, and now a path. Here's where we run into the issues. I, 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 Illustrator's intentions are perfect here. At the time that I applied this command right now, it made most sense for Illustrator to simply take my compound path and my regular path and group them together. But now I'm going a step beyond. I'm drawing another shape over here. And I want to subtract this from the overall shape. In my mind, I think this is all one shape. It's not. It's a group of two different shapes. But now when I take these and I choose minus front, objects start to disappear. And that's again because I am now pr uh, applying functions of Pathfinder, right, where uh, I'm doing a minus front, but I'm doing a minus front on a group. And, and Pathfinder doesn't know how to do that per se. And I just want to show you for just, as, uh, uh, t just to, so that people kind of really wrap their heads around this. When Adobe decided to add compound shapes, that functionality that I showed you earlier on, it wasn't just because, hey, it's non-destructive and you can go ahead and you can keep those rectangles live and you and I were both saying the same thing like, why would I ever want to keep my rectangles live? That's the stupidest feature ever. It was because the capabilities of compound shapes were able to take a look at groups and newer functions, newer ways that Illustrator was able to build artwork, be it text, be it symbols, be it gradient mesh, be it anything inside of Illustrator, all those new modern things that we take for granted now inside of Illustrator. And compound shapes were able to understand those and perform incredibly complex mathematical functions on them. So if I just do a simple minus front where I'm subtracting a, a single rectangle from a group that contains a single rectangle and a compound path, which right now is a lot of math for this old function to do, if I option or alt click on it, what am I doing? I am now invoking the compound shape command, but it's not the result. It's using a completely different set of mathematical guidelines in order to compute what the end result is going to be. And that's why you'll see that now it correctly creates this shape. Now you can argue, is this the way that I want it to be? When you first performed 
the steps initially to create the compound shape, and then you added something else, and the compound path, and then you combined it, and then it grouped it. Illustrator didn't know you were eventually getting to this point. It was providing the best possible options in context of the information that it had, right? And that was, again, one of the reasons why Adobe added compound shape functionality. Because no matter how you build things, it would build things the way that you expect it to. But because the users didn't see it that way, they just wanted to know, why do I see two rectangles? Get rid of my rectangles. I don't want to have to click on the expand button. Adobe reverted back to the behavior, and it's now using a, a, a I don't want to say a lesser capable math. But it's not taking every single type of construct in Illustrator into account when it's creating that mathematical stuff. And if I click on this now, I could choose Expand, and now I get it broken down into the shapes that I would expect. Notice, by the way, now it is a compound path that's here, right? Because I went ahead and I expanded it that way. So a couple of things just to keep in mind. If this is the functionality that you plan on doing where you're going to be building artwork and modifying it over time, don't use Pathfinder because it just is going to lead to a many, many other problems down the, down the line. Um, Pathfinder is, you know, I, I've told many people that Pathfinder is dead to me. I use ShapeBuilder tool right now. ShapeBuilder basically will do a much better job because it's using math and then it instantly expands it and then turns it all back to basic shapes. So it doesn't rely on the fact that it needs to have grouping groups and things like that. It just goes ahead and reduces your object down to the most basic possible shape. So ShapeBuilder is always going to be the best option for you to use moving forward, in my opinion. If you feel you want to continue to use compound paths, then fully embrace compound paths the way they were back in Illustrator 3 or Illustrator 5, meaning that if I take a shape and I draw another shape and I now want to punch a hole, I'm not using Pathfinder, I'm pressing Command 8. And now I draw another shape and I bring this other shape over here. Look at my layers panel. I now take these two shapes and I want to combine all these together and unite them together. Select all of them, press Command 8. I now completely uh, encompass all this into a single compound path. This is the way that we worked in the old days. So what happens is that if you end up kind of in a mixture where you're working with the old and the new and you're trying to expect the same behavior of older functions in Illustrator and newer functions in Illustrator, then you're going to run into a problem. And this is you know, it's no different than plumbing in a house. You know, you work, you, you, you come into a home and you have old plumbing in the house. And then you want to put in a really fancy new sink. And that new sink is not compatible with that plumbing. So you have to run new pipes into your house just for that one sink. So now you have two sinks in your kitchen, one sink that runs in the old plumbing and one sink that runs in the new plumbing. And then if you have a problem, uh, you know, you can't necessarily, you know, decide to switch sinks without having any kind of, uh, you know, issue. Uh, and you have to either decide that I'm only going to use new plumbing and I'm going to basically rip out all the old plumbing and put the new one in, or I'm going to deal with the fact that there are some issues. And the only way to deal with that fact, and this is just a reality of Illustrator today, you have a ton of combination of old and new, and you have to find some way to make those two come together. Uh, and the only way to do that is to know how the old functions work, know their expectations, know their limitations. And then when you use the new stuff, make sure you're using it in the right way. So hopefully this sets a little bit more context around everything. No one says it's not confusing. It's Adobe Illustrator. It's around for 25 years. It's changed so much since then. You, this is technology, and it's just the way that it is. You have to realize that there is a lot, a lot of stuff that has changed over time, uh, and there's different functions. Um, but you just have to realize that sometimes there's more to it than meets the eye. So hopefully this is helpful. Plenty of more stuff uh, at lynda.com if you want to find out about Illustrator in general. I have so much uh, stuff there, not just me, but Justin Seeley. Uh, and if you have questions, just reach out to me, Morty. Uh, at, at Morty is my Twitter handle. You can find me on Facebook um, or on YouTube. rwillustrator.blogspot.com is my blog. And hopefully you find this all helpful.